Okay, we'll try again. Uh, let's see if we can invite Maria again. There we go. Pride. Ah, uh, again, yep, yeah, just hanging out in Fort Collins. There's <laughs> Maria. Oh my gosh, there you are. Just some technical difficulties, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, it, this always happens. I'm just like, oh, it's fine. I'm sitting outside. It's a nice day in Colorado. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Nothing to yeah. complain about. Yeah, but let's jump right in. I feel like we have so much to talk about. Um, All right. And so a little background. I am lucky enough to be sponsored by Cervello, which you work for. Um, mm -hmm. And when it's such a cool thing to know, like, we've never like met in person, but it's so interesting to know, you know, the people behind the bikes I'm riding. And it almost makes it like a way more personal experience. Um, and just like knowing now more about your your story and how you got into cycling, it it just makes my experience so different. Um, knowing that like, it, you know, it's almost like a meal, right? You know, when like someone like <laughs> puts love into this creation, you're just like, oh my god, like this is more. It than tastes just, even like, better. <laughs> yeah, it's it's way more than like. Uh, this is just like fast food. It's like, oh my God, this person that's behind all of these bikes, like has such a personal connection that like now when I ride, even this morning I was on a ride and I was like, oh my God, I know the person <laughs> who made the Caldonia possible. Amazing. That's so, cool. <laughs> yeah, I would love it uh, if you could just maybe, we'll, we'll talk about your personal story into cycling and then then we can talk about your job. But I think, you know, where you started really impacts, you know, where you're at now and just your, your role is like a product, the director of product management at Cervello. So yeah, I would love it if you take away and kind of give me a little bit of your background. Yeah, um, sure. <laughs> yeah, we can jump in. Yeah, so um, I'll try to keep it somewhat brief, but uh, basically, yeah, don't skimp. Yeah, <laughs> right after high school, uh, I, I married my high school sweetheart and uh, he joined the Marine Corps. We moved out to California. We we're just kids, you know, kicking around. Where are um, you I grew up in Minnesota. Okay. Yeah, St. Paul, uh, graduated from St. Paul. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, you know, we spent um, almost five years out here initially down in North County, San Diego. Um, and, uh, when we headed back to Minnesota, um, I had started riding, or sorry, I skipped a part. I had just started riding um, basically the year before we moved back to Minnesota. So I was here in California. Um, I had bought like a $200 bike yes. um, and met this girl that was training for triathlons and asked me to to train with her. I thought, okay, yes. so learned how to swim and I had already been running a little bit. So um, yeah, I had just started, you know, getting into it a little bit. I knew nothing about bikes or riding. Um, but about a year later, uh, my husband passed away. Um, he suffered from PTSD, um, having been overseas, um, Iraq and Afghanistan, both um, during uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom. Um, and so about a year after we moved back to Minnesota, um, he took his own life. Uh, so God, we, uh, that, like, yeah, I, was, like, <laughs> I don't even know if I can deal with that. <laughs> like, Eve, I just like feel so much for you. I cry so easily now. Yeah, um, <laughs> God, that is, that's really, that's a lot. Yeah, it was. Um, and luckily, uh, I have a, a really good group of um, family around me. Uh, my own family, obviously, my parents and my sister, um, but also his parents, um, whom I'm still quite uh, close to. Yeah. So together, I think um, we really bonded. Um, everybody did, of course. Um, yeah. And came through this all together. Um, yeah, but one of the key things for me is that um, I had already started riding, and um, I basically spent that summer riding my bike. Like, I quit my job. Yeah. I, wasn't, I didn't do anything else, really. Um, and riding really became this outlet where – you know, personal reflection. I was only riding alone at the time. I didn't know anything about group rides. Yeah. Um, I used to ride up to the cemetery a lot and just kind of sit there and look at the beautiful scenery, you know, um, yeah. and say hi. Um, but it, you know, 
the there's the emotional part but there's this physical outlet yeah that i think is so important um, when you go through something so tragic um and a lot of people don't really get that introduction i think um because it's just not a part of their lives or it's not suggested you know you go to therapy and you're just talking about your your feelings but having a physical outlet i think is has been extremely extremely beneficial uh yeah for me specifically yeah yeah i mean i i think like and I was talking to Sarah Taylor, who's the, you know, my point of contact, one of my point of contacts at Cervello. Um, and I was saying like, God, the bike has like through the hardest couple of years in my life has been like so crucial because obviously, yeah, I've, I've, therapy is great and like talk therapy, that's a way to process. But I think I'm someone that needs to like physically like feel something or like experience and like put into put my emotions and like feel them in like a physical manifestation and and it doesn't have to be like pain but it could be like joy of a ride or you know physical exhaustion and so i think like that that's a way for me to process as well so like i think your story like really hits home for me too yeah for sure and i use it still today you know outside of um, this, you know, subject that we're talking about, but just yeah. any, anytime I need to, you know, reset or uh, clear my head about anything, writing is really the most effective thing that yeah. I can ever think of. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely a good, good way to like zone out or be really present depends on what you, yeah. depends on what you want or need at that time. Exactly. Exactly. Um, which is crazy, you know, so like you've seen how the, bike can like influence and like lift people up and like help with mental mental you know struggles or grief or anything like that emotional and so it's just so interesting to know that like that is probably kind of like in the background of your mind as you like do really hard work as you like research all of these products um that we get to enjoy and so yeah. like you you're like the like a chef the behind the scenes <laughs> person and the rest of us just get to enjoy this thing and before we talk about like your your role uh, do you ever like think about that like when you see someone riding a cervello like do you get like a little sense of like oh man I helped <laughs> I helped make that. yeah totally uh, it's it's well first of all it's just kind of a surreal experience to see something out in the wild that that you had such a, a big hand in um yeah. but to the idea that that person connected with that specific bike for whatever reason um yeah it's it's extremely gratifying and um it's it's what makes this job you know so exciting and fun yeah and i think maybe we could talk about like a little bit of an example and i don't know if you know you could run through the a sparrow or something like that because that was a big bike for cervello and like personally mm -hmm. for me I was talking to Sarah about it and I was like, I was like, this is the first bike that I've like emotionally bonded with. Like, I was <laughs> like, I, it is now like part of my family. I have been on like trips with it. Like I've been, I've done shit. I've seen things. It's like seeing me at my worst. And so to me, that's like the number one bike where I'm like, oh my God, this is like my thing. And that bike that you had a huge part in, you know, pushing for, like, mm -hmm. gave me some of, like, my best experiences. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like, how did, like, you know, obviously the bike was launched, what, it was 2019? 2019, yeah. Yeah. Summer. So, like, when, when does Cervelo or, like, Obviously, you don't have to give me specifics because <laughs> it's the bike industry and other other companies are probably they're like watching like, oh, how does they how do they do this? <laughs> but like, you know, let's say you're like, hey, we want to launch in 2019. When do when do you even start researching? Like, when do you think about like, hey, we should do a gravel bike? Yeah. Um, well, in general, the answer would be um, 18 to 24 months is a standard ish development cycle. So de depending on the. The complexity of the project yeah um, but a lot of times the research or let's say I, ideation phase comes before that 
Yeah. Um, with Aspero specifically, um, or I should say gravel and Cervelo, um, it it wasn't a new concept in terms of, you know, should, should we do this or shouldn't we? But it was something that um, the brand hadn't really ever fully committed to before. Right. Um, the, that, um, the caveat to that is that the former C series um, actually had sort of this dual personality as a yes. gravel bike or an endurance bike, right? Um, yes. But at the time of that bike, gravel was um, not really all that well defined. It was still yes. kind of experimental. Um, so you know, we we as an industry or as a, a cycling community have, let's say, graduated to uh, full on gravel, where yeah. you know you want that knobby tire. Um, and yep. just a big slick isn't going to cut it most of the time. Yeah. So, so like, what does even research look like? Like, do you, because, you know, like in my head, you know, I'm from a science background, like, oh, it's research. Like, we go out and see what everyone else is doing. Or do we like conduct interviews or we yeah. look at like what specs are. So what does that process look like? And this is even before there's like, you know, engineering specs drawn up, I'm guessing. Right, exactly. I mean, it's it's kind of all of the above, right? So um, we'll pick out some events to go to um, and not only observe and participate ourselves, but also to talk to people and, you yeah. know, just as you know, riding alongside next to somebody and being or asking them simple questions like, oh, how do you like your bike? What do you like yeah. about it? What would yeah. you change, you know? Yeah. Um, and you can get a lot out of that even from a very small sample set of people um, because everybody's so different. Um, and if you start to identify some things that are common um, that people seem to say, it's something you start to pay right. attention to. And um, is it a, something, a problem you can solve or is it uh, something we should adopt, you know, into our own design, things like that. Yeah. Um, I was guessing the engineers, you get, you get together with them. You're like, all right, here's our feedback. Here's what the people, the people have spoken. They want this yeah. in a gravel bike. Exactly. And a lot of time when, um, these events as well so if somebody's been yeah. already assigned to the project you know they'll come along and um, get to have the same experience that I do um, when we interact with with riders in that's person. awesome so, yeah yeah you're like um, the product therapist <laughs> the what you're the product th therapist you just like listen yeah. to everyone we're like oh my god we need this we need it yeah <laughs> Yeah, and it's hard not to interject your own um, opinion right. or, um, uh, yeah, I guess opinion is the right word. But, you know, if you have a strong opinion about something and then you go out and talk to people and realize, well, maybe you weren't fully accurate. Like, right. You really like, have to. Uh, I might not be the market, right? Like, I think that's the hard part is exactly. like my opinion yeah. might be what the masses need. And that's probably really difficult. Um, yeah, but there's a flip side too, whereas maybe you have an idea that no one else is really talking about. And so right. there's an opportunity to, um, you know, influence things um, yeah. in a new way. So that's fun too. Yeah, that's super exciting. And so, you know, you do the research, the engineering team comes up with the designs. And then what does testing even look like to, um, I guess, like to whatever degree you can talk about it, obviously, like, don't tell us any secret things, but I mean, how many, like, do you have like multiple iterations of geometries and then you test those out because um, I'm sure there's, well, you can talk about it, like, there's probably like tons of things to do with like getting models, getting, you know, carbon layups, like that's pretty expensive. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it definitely varies, um, but almost always there's iterations of, of something um yep. that we have to kind of redo or or if the testing didn't go well we have to uh fix it for some reason um in terms of geometry caledonia is actually a good example uh yeah. where we we had um built some mules out of aluminum uh so yep. aluminum frames um or excuse me steel uh that we had multiple forks from past or i should say existing bikes that had different yep. offsets um so we would you know, ride the mules around with different fork offsets to help decide yeah. what's the best approach in the geometry, um, which resulted in in what Caledonia 5 and Caledonia are today. So, yeah. um, you know, you have to spend the time and um, you can have a theory on paper, but um, until you start riding the bikes and actually experiencing it for yourself, it's really hard to 
Yeah. No, for sure. So man, you guys landed with like the, the Caledonia. So I went from riding the S3 to the Caledonia and the, I mean, they're obviously wildly different bikes, but the difference yeah. like cornering, it was like the first time where I've been like on a descent and I was like, oh my God, like the bike, will, it will like actually just stay exactly where you want it to. And you're just, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this feels so right. <laughs> I'm enjoying this so much. And so I've become like way more confident at descending, just knowing and like on turning roads, just knowing that the bike is like full, I can fully trust it at this point. I'm like, yeah, she'll, she'll stick this corner. She'll land, she'll stick the landing. Yeah, and that just shows how important geometry is. It, it can yeah. be a, you know, a half a degree in the head tube angle or a millimeter in offset on the fork. Like all of these things make such a, a large impact to how the bike actually feels when you take it out on the road. And who's testing it? Like how many people generally test it? And is it subjective or do you guys like fill stuff out afterwards or do you actually like i mean you have a huge network of ambassadors and athletes like do you let them try any pre-production stuff out or do you wait until it's way further along um i again I, it depends a little bit on the project um there's yeah. things that we know you know so when we're doing yeah. when we did the new s5 um the geometry didn't change much because we knew that it was good um, but then something like a Sparrow in Caledonia, we definitely try to get it out to as many people as possible because it was a new yep. concept. Um, if we have opportunities to send them to people outside of Cervelo itself, um, yep. we'll take advantage of that for sure. But um, the the biggest, I think, imp or, um, value we've gotten so far, at least of the few projects um, that I've been a part of since I joined the brand, <clears throat> come directly from people who have a lot of experience on other Cervelo bikes yeah. and can really point out the things that are different um, yeah. in good and bad ways. Yeah. Uh, I think, and then someone has asked a question if there's a uh, testing price points. So I'm curious, I'm not sure exactly. I guess I'm sit wondering if you test every, do you test every like price point out? Like, Hey, this is the, SRAM one by force access or red or do you just assume they'll all pretty much I'm just curious like price points let's chat about that yeah um I'm not totally sure I understand what the question is um but I could answer it in a couple of different ways I think um first would be like price point in frames so like if you yep. take Caledonia 5 versus regular Caledonia um they all go through the same amount of testing um you know, machine testing and, and actual yep. ride testing. Um, but then when we're talking about different group sets, um, we get, typically we get early samples from the suppliers, so like SRAM or Toronto right. in this case. Um, so we can hang those parts on whatever bikes we have available and make sure that um, compatibility is where it needs to be for our, from our side um, yeah. and functionality so that we can decide a, is this something we want to use in our line? Or B, uh, could we ask for maybe some tweaks here and there or a combination of different parts together could work better for our brand? Yeah. Um, but yeah, the answer is um, yes, uh, I guess. In yeah. general, we do test all the different price points for sure. Um, and the thing that I'm curious about is obviously, I mean, I'm a woman, I ride the bikes. I actually ride almost everything fully stock. So like stock saddle, stock handlebars. And so you've managed to, especially with like handlebars, like I'm pretty small. I ride the smallest size of 48, uh, which means my handlebars are pretty narrow. And um, you know, you've got, you put on a pro logo saddle, I think on all of them. Um, and I happen to really like the pro logo saddle you have, but I'm guessing like, how do you end up deciding where like with sizes like the average like person that's going to ride that what their shoulder width is like what handlebars they're going to have and then same with the saddle um i feel like that people don't make a decision to buy a bike based on saddle but for me it's probably right. my first bike I've ever owned or like all of them now that have that that i'm like i don't change the saddle it's like just perfect for me that's awesome so yeah. Like, how do you, yeah how do you end up like <laughs> figuring this stuff out like how do you know that I'm going to be the the right person for that like handlebars and it it fits 
Yeah, so we'll start off by saying that touch points are really, really hard to get right uh, right. for 100% of the customer base, right? So the best we can do is hope that, let's say, half of the the people that buy our bikes are happy with those touch points um, yeah. and don't need to need or want to change them. Mm -hmm. um, and saddles in particular, as right. you, I'm sure you know, is such a personal thing. So um, we have to kind of trust uh, the research behind the designs of these saddles. Um, yeah experience them ourselves obviously we have to try them out and see if we agree or not yeah. um and similar to uh bike research is um we talk about things like saddles um where how many people do you see out in the yeah. in the wild riding saddles like this or um how many people have tried it and didn't like it um or how many people are un unhappy with what they're currently riding. And right. maybe, maybe you can make a suggestion based on what you, in my case, what I'm specking on the bikes. Um, and are they happy with that? Yeah. Um, the short nose saddles though, I think have been um, a little bit of a game changer in terms of totally. saddle comfort um, across the board. And there's so many brands that have a version of it now. Um, and I think they just really make a lot of sense in terms of where you put your body um, yeah. on the saddle and how it affects the rest of your position and, uh, and comfort for sure. <laughs> totally. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's super interesting. And I guess, you know, when I think about all the options that you can have for a bike when you're specking it, it's not just like, you know, we think of the big players for like components, but you know, when it comes to wheels and saddles and handlebar tape and bearings, um, and like what through axle to put in because my s3 had like the the rat one yeah on but i'm curious like if you could like ballpark how many different things you normally get and have to ride because i'm sure i mean you have to test them out um you're not just gonna be like hey we're gonna spec these wheels on this bike i'll never ride them but they meet the mm -hmm. price point um mm -hmm. so i'm curious like how many <laughs> how much just like stuff do you have to test out at this point? Really good question. I'm not even sure I could throw a number <laughs> at that. But um, so we've just recently moved our office. And uh, I'm sure you're aware. Yes. Uh, maybe the audience doesn't know, but we moved from Toronto, Canada to Orange County uh, fairly I recently. I can't wait to visit. I'm so yeah. excited. Yeah, I'm we're excited to. to have people. It's still under remodel. So that's why yeah. I'm not there. Uh, or any of us are there for that matter. Um, but the... The Toronto office, we had various cages in our warehouse that was, um, you know, each department had a cage, it was called. Yep. Um, and the product cage is filled with all of these parts, right? So we had boxes and boxes of tires, shelves of, of wheels, um, yeah. and then all, of course, all the other things, saddles and handlebars and um, yeah. staff. Um, so it was kind of like if somebody was... Uh, working on a bike build or had a, let's say there was samples coming in. Um, what parts can we put on that, that we need to have some feedback on. And so yeah. it definitely I'm not testing every single part myself. Yeah. <laughs> that would be almost impossible. Um, but everybody rides, right. At least to yeah. some degree. So we can get feedback on just about anything um, within a short period. So nice. I have a few yeah. more questions uh, that I think, maybe some other people would be interested, but I'm definitely interested in. Uh, the first one is like proprietary parts or so, like, you know, you've got a lot of times it's like handlebars or stems, mm -hmm. um, something around that, uh, or, you know, like seat tubes um, that, that can be proprietary. But I'm curious, like, um, is that like an entirely different process like do you develop it with the bike in mind or like which the chicken or the egg what comes first is someone like you know when you look at the s5 it's a super interesting handlebar or stem setup was someone like i really want this and you <laughs> find a bike around it or is it like hey we have the we need to update our bike it just so happens we're going to make this funky stem that works <laughs> <laughs> no i would say in general it starts with the bike itself um the S5 is a great example because one of the main goals of that bike when it was first started um, is was to have full integration with not only electronic drivetrains, but also mechanical. Um, yeah. And so the V-STEM allowed that cable path to, 
to yeah. flow nicely without having any kinks in the cables. Um, and it was very aerodynamic. So yeah, the the design concept came out of specifically those goals, which was yeah. you know mechanical shifting and aerodynamics. Um, but then there's bikes like uh, um, S S series or S three, where that handlebar, um, specifically the bar itself, was an iteration of the uh, R five handlebar. Yeah. So there were things that we, we thought could use some improvements on that bar. Um, and so that made it into the design of the S series bar, which just so happened to work with the concept we were working on for cable routing in that yeah. system. So it does vary a little bit, but in general, I think the, the bike is the first thing that, um, you know, yeah. comes to ideation and then the rest yeah. of the part kind of follow. Yeah. You've probably got, I mean, I'm assuming that, you know, if we go back to all the way at the beginning, it's like, Hey, let's let's take a look at this bike like what is our goal is it performing well can we make improvements and then there's a mm -hmm. bunch of testing which leads me you mentioned so my second question and we can call it my last was aerodynamics right like yeah. Cervelo is known you know I think you guys made a huge name for yourself in you know like TT and triathlon bikes like I have a friend who I mean I, you know, I work at the pros closet some of our best selling bikes are Cervelo, like TT bikes, even from like years ago, because they're so yeah. amazing. And so, I mean, like, are you involved with um, the aero testing or like, do you just get feedbacks? So, like, what does that process kind of look like? Yeah, my role in that process is um, a little bit of, of an outsider. You know, the designers yeah. are, are really doing uh, the aerodynamic testing. Yeah. Um, my input comes in mostly in the beginning of the project. So we'll, yeah. we'll have goals set. Um, you know, we need to improve aerodynamics and what, what do we feel is feasible? Um, right. because we know about the, let's say the previous or the current generation of that bike and, and some of the areas that maybe we could have done a little better on. So I'll help to set a goal, you know, let's shoot for X number of grams improvement. Um, yeah in the aerodynamic results um but yeah from there they they really take over that that's that's way nice. more nerdy than than i am so <laughs> that's good i um yeah. this is like an anecdote i remember like uh one of my first huge rides on the aspero and the aspero of course is like you know haul ass not cargo it's meant to be like mm -hmm. a really fast gravel bike it's I mean, it's fairly aero um, for gravel bikes. There's not a lot of like random things coming off of it. And, um, you know, I was riding up to basically 13,000 feet on this bike and like basically mountain biking down the other side. Yeah. And I just remember thinking, I like said out loud, I was like, every product developer at Cervelo and all the engineers probably hate me right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, like absolutely testing this bike to the limit. I'm probably going to break it. I have like no I have like bags on my bike like a bag on the front of my bike my jacket's flapping I'm like I have <laughs> ruined everything they've tried for <laughs> like, I'm so sorry I was so nervous I was gonna break that bike within like the well first I mean it that bike is man I it has seen some stuff and uh <laughs> it, it handles everything I'm so psyched on it um, which is why I'm like attached to it, but I definitely took it off some drops. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we know people are going to use bikes way well outside of what we, uh, let's say, uh, voice the intention yeah. of the bike uses. Um, yeah. but we test for things like that. So if you end up breaking that bike, we should know so that we know what to yeah. do next and an improvement. So, <laughs> yeah, thus yeah. far. Theo, Theo the Gold Sparrow has been an absolute trooper. Um, I like that name, Theo. Yeah, <laughs> Theo. It's after uh, Theo Bromine from Chocolate, and um, <laughs> that just makes you feel really good. And Theo makes me feel really good. That's so. right. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, do you have anything else you want to say before we kind of sign off? Um. I don't know. I maybe I just give you a little kudos. I think uh, this this series that you've been doing has been really amazing, and um, it's been really fun to see all these. I mean, inspiring women um, yeah. and to tell their story, and um, it's been really cool to watch. So good job! Thank <laughs> and you. And I look so forward much. to the next ones too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, thank you so much. And like, 
it's so so cool at least for me personally and maybe anyone else that rides a cervello that like like this is the person behind all of it. like i mean there's a huge team behind it but like yeah of course it's so cool to meet you even over the internet that like you're you play a huge role in like my like actual happiness um <laughs> cool. and you're like with me on every ride and i didn't even know it um but i'm excited <laughs> and like super thankful that like you're a badass woman behind the bike. Um, there's a ton of badasses in Cervelo. Um, yeah. I'm super excited to come out and like meet everyone uh, that, you know, it's behind these bikes. So thanks for doing all of this amazing work. Uh, <laughs> awesome. And thanks. just like, yeah, it's, it's super inspiring and you've made some super fun bikes for everyone else to enjoy. So that's awesome. Really I'll make sure the rest of the team knows that as well. <laughs> yeah oh my god it is like i am forever indebted um to everyone at cervello for sure <laughs> I'm like, well we're man. so happy to have you <laughs> yeah thank you so much for chatting and hopefully we can see each other in, in real life soon sounds good all right thanks bye <laughs> bye, bye.